The land explored by our ancestors extends from the Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists led by the pilgrim of the 21st century, Sapari Skakov, has already visited more than 40 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trails of Nomads episode presents Is there a connection between the medieval state Uyghur and modern Uyghurs? Did Genghis Khan follow the state control system of Gokturks? What special construction technology did the Gokturks use to build their summer residences? For sure, these whitish rifts of Mongolia remember everything. Hentai, Altai, Hungay, and Cyan Mountains are silent witnesses of the fact that our ancestors once lived here. Approximately 4,000 rivers flowing along their slopes and 3,000 mountain and steppe lakes provided their countless herds with water. Participants of the scientific expedition visited these places. There was so much information about the past that this volume was enough to create a separate film. This time we will tell you about the third Turkic Kaganah, which was also called the state Uyghur, and about the technological achievements of the Gok Turks. Sadaqtın oqtara eñ alıs qaşatın bizim türkterde bolğan. Ekinchi the arrows of our ancestors, the Turks, were the most long-range. In addition, there were no dismounted units, only the cavalry army. All the riders had stirrups, and this was the most important achievement at that time. Further, our ancestors used wheeled vehicles. In those days, there were wheeled vehicles. They, they wore trousers because it was very convenient for riding. But, for example, in Europe, the trousers were not worn and they did not know about them, and the stirrups were not used there. Riding went just without support and without a saddle. Many people say that the Roman legions possessed such technologies, but it is not true. Roman legionaries were foot soldiers. <laughs> The next stop of the scientific expedition is central Mongolia, the Saikin area in Bolgan region. There is a monument to the famous warrior and commander, whom the Gokturks called their main sword, El Ethnish Bilge Kaga. In 745, the second Turkic Kaganat fell. His successor was a new state, the Uyghur Kaganat. The country was governed by Kol Bilge Kaga. El Ethnish Bilge was his son. <laughs> One of the founders of the Uyghur Kaganat was El Etmish Bilge Kagan and his father Kol Bilge Kagan. In 745, Kol Bilge Kagan, united with his son El Etmish Bilge Kagan, destroyed the Gok Turkic Empire. After that, Kol Bilge Kagan ruled the country only four years from 745 to 749 years. After the death of the Kagan, the power passed to El Etmish Kagan. El Etmish Bilge Kagan, or Moin Shor Kagan, was the ruler from 749 to 759. He tried to strengthen his state and therefore often made aggressive raids on his neighbors. Thus, he conquered the tribes of Chikderdi, the ancestors of the Kazakh Shakti, as well as Kidani and Karakitai. El Etmish Bilge Kagan used the long experience of the state of Gokturks. However, after coming to power, El Etmish Bilge divided the state into three large districts, right, left and central. The Bayerku tribe was the largest in number. It was divided into two parts. One was named Segiz Ogiz and was assigned to the left wing. And the second was Togiz Ogiz and belonged to the right wing. Both wings were under the rule of the two sons of the Kagan. He ruled the central one. <laughs> 
monument to El Etmish Bilge Kagan was discovered in the early 20th century by a group of historians led by the Finnish scientist Ramstad. However, they could not fully read what was written on the monument. Deeper research was done by the well-known Turkologist, member of the expedition, Karjaubai Sartkojaule. Bunda soil kezdiği, ano kök tutuk algas kanatından bastıp son kumana üçüncü kanatına değin kanatında. I want to know that there is a large amount of information on the monument, beginning with the Gokter Kaganat and until the last Kaganat, including types of military ranks, features of military administrative service. There are dates and places of battles, information about who was engaged in battles and what was achieved. In addition, there is a note on how the third Turkic Kaganat was formed. The periods of its formation are outlined. <laughs> Kaganat called Uyghur existed from 745 to 840 years. The state has nothing to do with modern Uyghurs. According to the information from the architectural documents, the main population of the country was the Turkic-speaking Oghuz tribes. The ethnonym Uyghur means Levan, that is the basis of society, the state. The scientific literature contains the name of the state as the Uyghur Kagana. However, the words, we were ruled by the Turkic Kipchaks for about 500 years, is written on the monument. That is, they openly wrote that the Turks Kipchaks ruled. So before the third Kaganite, the power was in the hands of the Kipchaks, and the name Uyghur Kaganat is a political name. That is, there was the formation of a union of tribes. These are the tribes, Bayorku, Basimel, Karluks. These three tribes have united to create a state. Therefore, it is more correct to call the state a united Turkey Kaganat. That is, these three tribes were the main leaven of the state. Given all the above arguments, historians believe that it is more correct to call the Uyghur Kaganat as the United Turkic Kaganite. If the power belonged to the Kipchak tribes in the first and second Turkic Kaganites, then Bayorku, one of the branches of the Togizogis tribe, became the leader in governing the state. They adopted the Kipchak system of the government, because at that time, this was the most advanced system of state administration. The city of Orda Balik became the capital of the state similar to the Gokturks. Such a policy and experience of predecessors helped establish diplomatic relations with powerful powers such as, for example, the Tang Empire and a number of large states of Central Asia. <laughs> They were in very good relations with China. When the threat loomed over China and Turkic commander An Lushan invaded the northern provinces, the ruler of the Tang Empire was forced to seek help from the United Turkic Kaganate. All this is written on the tombstone and all of this is recorded also in Chinese manuscripts. Necessary assistance to the Tang Empire was rendered and An Lushan's campaign was stopped. The United Turkey Kaganat developed not only political and military spheres, many achievements were made in the spiritual and cultural areas. For example, before 850, the country used runic writing, after which they switched to the Sogdian alphabet. Initially, the state worshipped Kok Bore, which means Grey Wolf. Later, many accepted the Manichaean religion. Manichaeism implies elements of Zoroastrianism, Christianity, Buddhism, and Shamanism. The founder of religion is the misopathic writer and artist Mani. According to his teaching, the world is the eternal struggle of the forces of good and evil. This religion was not widely spread in the Kazakh land. Only Taraz preserved some facts that Manichaeism once existed here. <laughs> The peculiarity of this era is the appearance of Manichaeism. However, this religion lasted only 10 years. After the founder of this religion lost power, that is, departed from the government of the state, the spread of Manichaeism stopped. Thanks to the Uyghur Kaganat or the United Turkic Kaganat, the Kyrgyz have adopted Manichaeism. The Kyrgyz had this religion for about a hundred years. The state, as well as the previous two Turkic Kaganats, became a powerful one. 
However, it did not last long in the historical arena. After a century, nothing left from the formidable power. The main reason for the collapse is the dissolution of power and the struggle for power. The disputes between the representatives of the noble blood strongly shook the state. This was used by neighboring tribes. It was not difficult to win over the weakened army. In 840, the Kyrgyz conquered the United Turkey Kaganat, and the ruler Kulugbek Kagan was killed. The tribes that made up the backbone of the state were dispersed in different directions. Having won the capital of the state, Kyrgyz brought chaos to the lives of local residents. However, the Kyrgyz did not rule for long. After the demise of their state, part of the population joined the Tang Empire, part went to East Turkestan, Hakasia, Tumen. Central Asia and Kazakh land. Here there were only Kereys and Naimans. Turkic tribes, which as a result of migration settled on a vast territory, made adjustments to their lives of local residents. For example, the Oges, who moved to the northern part of the Tian Shan Mountains, subsequently exerted a huge influence on the political and economic situation of Maui Aranar and the south of Kazakhstan. In 1999, they conquered the most recent state of the Aryats, the Samanid Khanat, and formed the Karakhan state. However, the Karakhan state did not exist in the history. This name was used by Russian researchers. The the state is known to all as the Afrasiab Kingdom. Afrasiab is the name of the medieval Turan Batar. Naimans and Kerys, who were the masters of Mongolia, founded their own Khanate. In the structure of the state, there were no special changes. All management was based on the experience of the Gokturks. It seems that in 924, the state was conquered by the nomad tribes of Kidari. They also ruled on the principle of predecessors. Thus, the saxo turkic traditions of building and managing the state were preserved. During the times of the Naimans and Kerys, the state structure did not change either, and this form reached the period of Genghis Khan. This is the state system of Gog Turks, and Genghis Khan also used the experience of the Gog Turks in the governance of the state. For example, now the Mongols say Yel Ulis, which means the state. The Gog Turks lived in communities. The Mongols also adopted this and called such a structure Kuren or Shenber. Genghis Khan, who was called the leader of all nomads, almost completely adopted the system of state administration from the Turks. He entrusted the creation of all its structure in his country to Naimans and Kereys. The head of the state administration was Kerey Shin Gai Shin Sai. Using the many years of experience of the Gok Turks, he formed a state management corps for the Genghis Khan Empire. All these facts are confirmed by the Turkic names of all structures. <laughs> There is a proverb, sing on a horse, you can conquer lands and countries, but not manage them. Therefore, it is necessary to have such a structure, a system for collecting taxes to manage the state. And all this should really work. For example, the Mongols collected a tax from Russian princes. How? There was a system by which the princes themselves collected taxes and brought to the Khan. The Mongols adopted all this technique from our ancestors. The expedition made a stop in another historical place. It is a monument, Taikar Tas, located in central Mongolia, in the Arkhangai district. This stone had ancient inscriptions that were made in 11 languages in the period up to 17th to 18th centuries. According to scientists, this is a unique open-air museum. So we see the Tas thing at the Tonga Tas again, Tonga Tas Tibjazran. Tonga Tas Tibjazran is Alp Tas Tibjazran. The name of the stone is Tonatas, meaning a huge stone. Our ancestors, Gok Turks, left their inscriptions at different periods. There were written 25 texts in the ancient Turkic language. Only one text has survived to this day. Unfortunately, some vandals made inscriptions of their names and dates of their stay here. 
Atların cazgan, nasıl cazgan, nasıl cazgan, kaşan gitti, kaşan gitti, ne kadar yapmadan evde bitirdiğini. Tonatas is now full of autographs of vandals. This indicates the lack of culture of people who have been here. The monument, which has important historical significance, is being gradually destroyed. Who knows if our descendants will see this heritage left by their ancestors. Either they would learn about this most valuable monument only in research records and works of such scientists as Karjaubai Sarkozauli. <laughs> When I was preparing a three-volume atlas, I included everything there, all my early studies and articles. For example, there is an inscription on the stone. We sent our ambassador to the tribe of Basimil at Bespalik. They agreed on terms and place. There is another inscription which reads, This summer we roamed along the banks of the Tsessi River and stayed here. In the autumn we moved to Tonatas. On the reserve side of the stone there is another inscription. By the order of Bilge Kagan we crossed the Togul River. Apparently this inscription was connected with another military campaign. <laughs> In the vicinity of the historical stone in the Tama region, there is a very large concentration of Saka and Gokturk burials. All of them require careful study and state protection. During the stay here, the members of the scientific expedition were once again convinced that our ancestors left a big mark in the history of human civilization. Sakas, Huns, and Gokturks had very developed state system, army, living conditions of life and culture. As some Western historians have noted, these tribes never roamed aimlessly. There was a certain way. In the summer, they were roaming in the summer camps, in winter, in winter camp. Already in those days, they had large cities, which were not even in Europe. The summer residences of the rulers were built according to their special technology. The proof of this is the place near the Tess River, where once there was the Gokturkic pastures. <laughs> The place of ruler's headquarter was covered with a mound with a height of one and a half meters. Then this place was rammed. Then the fires were burned and everything was cleaned. All this was discovered during excavations. Gilded Khan's headquarter, surrounded by yurts of leaders, located here. The rest of the population, artisans, farmers and pastoralists, lived in another part of the settlement. That is, even the summer camp had its own infrastructure, as in cities. <laughs> They had their capitals, for example, Baibalik, Hanbalik. All of them were built in the form of fortresses. Inside the fortress there were residences of Khans and Kagans. Ordinary people lived in yurts nearby. In the summer everyone moved to the mountains. All this was connected with a change of pastures for livestock. In winter they returned to their original place. That's how people and settlements centered around cities. The staff of the scientific expedition visited the Museum of Mongolia to study art of ancestors. There are a lot of jewelry and household items made of gold, silver, other metals and clay. All products of Sakas and Gog Turks were adapted for a nomadic way of life. The processing of metals was very developed. People mainly produced weapons and tools. Numerous ancient mines indicate the fact that our ancestors extracted raw materials. Approximately 60 similar mines were found in Mongolia. Some scientists believe that our ancestors could not process iron. However, Gok Turks have become known throughout Central Asia thanks to their mastery in the processing of iron. Therefore, they were called Gok Turks, iron processors. Studying the legacy of our ancestors on Mongolian land, the members of the scientific expedition headed by Sapari Skakov did not forget about our compatriots who live here, in Bayan Olgi region, where scientists made another stop. The next episode will be devoted to these people.